Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of The Flawed Christian. Uh, goal of the uh, podcast or the, the Zoom here is to be able to help uh, bring some thought-provoking uh, content from the Bible as it relates to our world today, as well as uh, a bit of entertainment at times. And and hopefully, you know, there's some education involved because uh, at the end of the day, the goal is to not only read the Bible daily, and this is the mission of this uh, daily podcast, it's, it's also to study it. So we want to be studying the Bible. And, and so when we last left off, we were starting to get uh, into the Tower of Babel is, is what's up next. This is where the Lord confused people's languages. They were building a tower super high. It was more of a tower about how well they were doing. And the Lord came down and said, let us go down and confuse their language. And I, I, would, I would imagine that's why we have so many different languages today. And you hear people will say the saying, hey, stop babbling, you know, from the Tower of Babylon. I'm sorry, the Tower of Babel in Babylonia. And so you start to get into the story of Abraham and God promises a nation to Abraham. And he eventually also promises a son to Abram. There's two names, Abram and Abraham, but it's the same name. Uh, and then it kind of gets into the story of how God keeps his word and is anything impossible for God. And, and what I mean by that, he allowed Abram's wife, Sarah or Sarai, to uh, have a child at a very late age. He made a promise to Abraham that he would be the father of all nations and uh, anyone that blessed him, uh, he would bless them. And anyone who cursed Abraham, he would curse them. And so um, there is a lot of uh, good language in there, but the, the topic of tonight's episode is one that's a bit controversial and somewhat touchy i would imagine for people and it has to do with uh sodom and gomorrah and as many of you know sodom and gomorrah was a place where a lot of wickedness was being done and in the bible you know here's where we start to get into uh, homosexuality and, and things of that nature where the church will typically refer to not only this reading in Genesis 18, but other places in the Bible. And this is where a lot of times it gets very, I don't know, you know, it's, it's typically a diff difficult subject for a lot of people because I don't know that, that some people approach it right. You know, they will come off very callous and cold. They will certainly come off very matter of factly, but truly the essence of God is one, you know, from my studies that he is certainly loving, but as we have seen already throughout his interactions with Cain, his interactions with, you know, um, Adam and Eve, his interactions with anyone who fails to listen will be stern like a father, like a parent. But also we've seen from the first six, seven episodes, just how loving God is if you um, are obedient. And, you know, God has your best interest um, in mind. But there's just things we just cannot, as humans, comprehend what the bigger picture is because, quite honestly, you're just a human. And there are just things that you just simply are not going to understand. God is holy. He's pure, he's omnipotent, he's all-knowing, he, he's all of those things. He's the creator, he's the giver of life, he's the, the saver, savior of souls, he's, he's all of it. And so there'll never be a time that um, 
that I'll ever overly question anything. You know, I think it's quite natural for you to have questions in your mind at times, you know, the why, why, Lord, why, you know, but if you keep in mind that, that may God's will be done in everything that you do and ask the Lord to, to help you learn and to help, help you be strengthened through his word and through the relationship, then that's going to help you through life. And so before we dive in, let's quickly go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for all your blessings today. I believe it's October the 27th. It's been a long day, but Lord, thank you for waking me. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for allowing me to share the word at the end of a long day. My hope is, Lord, that I don't add anything to it or leave anything out and that this, this word will bless somebody and help them and encourage them to read your word. All these prayers we ask in your son, Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys, we're going to dive right in. Here's what the word says, and we'll read some of the footnotes. It says, and this is for new people or old people, in case you've never really read it. But here's what it says. It says, let me just make sure I'm in the right verse. This is uh, talking about uh, the conversation the Lord had with, yeah, his wife. Okay, so now we get to Abraham intercedes for Saul, Sodom. And this will tell you just how you know, loving and how thoughtful Abraham was. It says, the men got up from their meal and looked out towards Sodom. As they left, Abraham went with them to send them on their way. Should I hide my plan from Abraham? The Lord asked. For Abraham will certainly become a great and mighty nation, and all of the nations of the earth will be blessed through him. I have singled him out so he will direct his sons and their families to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and what is just for I will do for Abraham all that I have promised so the Lord told Abraham I've heard a great outcry from Sodom and Gomorrah because their sin is so flagrant I'm going to come down there to see if their actions are as wicked as I've heard if not I want to know the other men turned and headed towards Sodom but the Lord remained with Abraham and Abraham approached him and said Will you sweep away both the righteous with the wicked? Suppose you find 50 righteous people living in the city. Will you still sweep it away and not spare it for their sakes? Surely you wouldn't do such a thing, destroying the righteous along with the wicked. Why would you be treating the righteous and the wicked exactly the same? Surely you wouldn't do that. Should you not judge all of the earth to do what is right? And the Lord replied, If I find 50 people in Sodom, I will spare the entire city for their sake. Then Abraham spoke again. Since I have begun, let me speak further to my Lord. Even though I am but dust and ashes, suppose there are 45 people rather than 50. Will you destroy the whole city for the lack of, for lack of five? And the Lord said, I will not destroy it if I find 45 righteous people here. Then Abraham pressed his request further. Suppose there are only 40. And the Lord replied, I will not destroy it for the sake of 40. And he said, please don't be angry with me, Lord. Abraham pleaded, pleaded. Let me speak. Suppose only 30 righteous people are found. And the Lord replied, I will not destroy it if I find 30. Then Abraham said, since I have dared to speak to the Lord, let me continue. Suppose there are only 20. Of course, you know how the Lord responded. Finally, Abraham said, Lord, please don't be angry with me if I speak one more time. Suppose only 10, 10 are found there. The Lord replied, then I will not destroy it for the sake of 10. When the Lord had finished his conversation with Abraham, he went on his way and Abraham returned to his tent. So what's amazing before I continue to read is that Abraham was walking and talking with the Lord who came down in the form of a human to interact with Abraham and interact with his wife. And then eventually he heard a witness that was, that was happening down the city. And he said, I'm going to walk down there. I'm going to go down there myself. 
to see what's going on. So that evening, two angels came to the entrance of the city of Sodom. Lot was sitting there, and when he saw them, he stood up to meet them. Then he welcomed them and bowed with his face to the ground. He said, my lords, he said, come to my home to walk so I can wash your feet and be my guest for the night. You may then get up early in the morning and be on your way again. Oh no, they replied, we'll just spend the night out here in the city square. But Lot insisted, so at last they went home with him. And Lot prepared a feast for them, completed, complete with fresh bread made without yeast, and they ate. But before they retired for the night, all of the men of Sodom, young and old, came from all over the city and surrounded the house. They shouted, where are the men who came to spend the night with you? Bring them out to us so we can have sex with them. One point I'd like to make here, you may be talking to an angel of the Lord and, and I spoke about you know my encounter with a young lady who shared something that she believed she got from the Lord that put it on her heart about my mother a long time ago. You may actually, during the course of a day, be talking to an angel who looks like a human and you wouldn't know it was an angel. So remember, two angels came down to see what was going on in the city. And I don't know if the Lord was with them when the two angels got there, but the Lord was gonna find out what was going on. So the men said, where are those two men who came with you? Bring them out here so we can have sex with them. So they look like men, the angels. So, um, so Lot, stepped outside to talk to them, shutting the door behind him. He said, please, my brothers, he begged, don't do such a wicked thing. Look, I have two virgin daughters. Let me bring them out to you and you can do with them as you wish. Now think about that. You're, I have three daughters. I know that these two people, but they're angels that are before me, I know that they're holy and pure, and, and I'd rather have my daughters go out and have the men do wicked things to them versus the angels. I know that doesn't probably set well with some of you guys, but there are bigger things at play here other than this flesh and blood we call, you know, a human body. So he said, let me bring them out to you. You can do with them as you wish. Please leave these men alone, for they are my guests and under my protection. Stand back, they shout. This fellow came to town as an outsider. Now he's acting like he's our judge. We'll treat you far worse than those other men. And they lunged toward the door uh, and they lunged toward Lot to break down. The door. But the two angels reached out, pulled Lot back inside the house and bolted the door. Then they blinded all the men, young and old, who were at the door of the house. So they gave up trying to get inside. Meanwhile, the angels questioned Lot. Do you have any other relatives here in the city? They asked. Get them out of this place, your sons-in-law, sons, daughters, or, or anyone else. For we are about to destroy this city completely. The outcry against this place is so great it has reached the Lord, and he has sent us to destroy it. So Lot rushed out to tell his daughters, fiancés, quick, get out of the city. The Lord is about to destroy it. But the young men thought he was only joking. At dawn the next morning, the angels became insistent. They said, hurry, they said to Lot, take your wife, your two daughters who are here, get out right now or you will be swept away in the destruction of the city. When Lot still hesitated, the angel seized his hand and the hands of his wife and two daughters and rushed them to save the outside of the city for the Lord was merciful. When they were safely out of the city, one of the angels ordered, run for your lives and don't look back or stop anywhere in the valley. Escape to the mountains or you'll be swept away. And oh no, my Lord Lot begged, you have been so gracious to me and saved my life and you've shown such great kindness, but I cannot go to the mountains. Disaster would catch up with me there and I would soon die. See, there is a small village nearby. Please let me go there instead. Don't you see how small it is? Then my life will be saved. All right. The angel said, I will grant your request. I will not destroy the little village, but hurry, escape to it, for I can do nothing until you arrive there. And then in quotations, it says, this explains why that the village 
was known as Zoar, which means little place. It says Lot reached the village just as the sun was rise, rising over the horizon. Then the Lord rained down fire and burning sulfur from the sky on Sodom and Gomorrah. He utterly destroyed them along with the other cities and villages of the plain, wiping out all of the people and every bit of vegetation. But life's, Lot's wife looked back as she was following behind him, and she turned into a pillar of salt. Abraham got up the next morning, hurried out of the place where he stood in the Lord's presence. He looked out across the plain toward Sodom and Gomorrah and watched as the columns of smoke rose from the cities like smoke from a furnace. And so, here's where people dive into homosexuality because the men wanted to sleep with the other men. And the Lord already had said there was way too much wickedness going on down in that city. So the Lord, God Almighty, the creator, at least from what we can ascertain or, 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 or put the pieces of the puzzle together, that he doesn't like that. And um, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and he also created Adam and Eve. And he said Adam should not be alone, so he made him a helper, a woman, so the two of them could come together, unite in marriage, and procreate, and be, um, you know, and be good to one another, and support one another. And that's the way the Lord intended it. But we also know that there were one third of the angels that were cast out of heaven and they came down here and disrupted a lot of things. And there was such wickedness, you know, the angels did, a, they taught humans a lot of things. They did a lot of things. I, it just, without going into it, it was not great. And eventually the Lord destroyed all of this stuff, you know, cause he said everybody down here was wicked except for Noah and his family. And so when you kind of put all that together, um, you arrive at those things that relate to homosexuality. However, the Lord loves people. The Lord wants to see you do well. The Lord wants you to have a relationship with him. And I cannot judge anybody because Everyone sins. Um, and according to God's eyes, at least as it reads, homosexuality would be a sin. The problem is so many people are so sensitive about it. And I would understand why they're sensitive about it because it's what's in them, if you will. And that's how they feel. And they don't wish to feel like they're doing something that is wrong because it's part of who they are how they're wired, their DNA, et cetera. Um, people sin all the time. They lust, they murder, they cheat, they steal, they dishonor their parents. They <sighs> It's endless. And that is why, you know, the Lord sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for the sins of mankind, whether that's homosexuality, whether that's lying and cheating and stealing and killing and robbing and all the rest of it. Sin is what corrupts people. Sin is what we need to turn away from. Sin is what we need to wash ourselves clean from. So um, it doesn't mean the Lord doesn't love you. It doesn't mean you cannot go to heaven. Um, and again, I can't speak for the Lord. All I know is whatever the story was about here and whether it was, there was more going on to it than what we read as far as wickedness, I don't make the rules. I just try to live by them, try to love people, regardless whether you're straight, gay, trans, whatever, and uh, encourage them to live a life that is pleasing to God. And I know it, it's gonna be difficult for this particular um, inkling or opportunity or longingness or way with which you are um, that makes it um, makes it difficult and I get it. So it's the end of this episode. Hopefully we, we got something from it and 
I'll see you guys next time.